Hello folks. So the last thing to add in is collision between these platforms. As you can see, I can just jump straight through them. So let's get straight into that. Now the collision that I've handled so far has all been within the player class. So if we scroll down to the player class and the update method, this is where I've done all the collision up to date. So I've got the player controls, the handling animation, gravity, and then this is where the collision starts. So this section here is the collision that I was using against the world map. So the dirt blocks and the grass blocks that you saw on the level, I'm handling the collision for all of that in here. However, the collision for the platforms is going to be slightly different because of the fact that they're dynamic. They move left and right and they move up and down. So I need to account for that. So although the basic principle is going to be the same, the code is going to be slightly different. So let's go down to where I've got all the other collision with enemies, lava and the exit. And I'll just make a new section underneath here and add a comment to it to say, check for collision with platforms. So to check for this collision, I need to move through each of the platforms individually and then check whether they've collided with the player's rectangle. So we say for platform in platform group. And this is going to give me essentially each of the moving platforms, regardless of whether it moves left or right or up and down. And then I can move, uh, I can check for collision in the X direction and then collision in the Y direction. So if you remember the way this player moved was that I had my actual rectangle coordinates and then I had a DX and a DY. So these were deltas. Essentially they meant what the difference is going to be or what the change is going to be in his movement. So when I press left and right, it gives me a delta X of plus or minus five. And then typically gravity by itself gives me a delta Y. And then when I jump, that changes as well. So the intention is, rather than looking for collision after the player has already moved, we take these delta x and y variables and basically say that this is where the player intends to move, check for collision at that intended position. So I've got this little image just to refresh what that meant. So this is where the player currently is. If I was simply just to move the player and then check for collision, it's too late because by that point you already have an overlap between, well, say the red block is the player and the black block is the tile or the platform. By this point in the collision, after the player has moved, it's too late and there's already a collision. So even though you might flag the fact that it's happened, your player on the screen is overlapping. So that's not an optimal approach. What we're doing instead here is using those DX and DY variables. So in this case, for example, it's saying that I've pressed the right arrow key. So my, right, uh, my red rectangle is intending to move to the right. And that's what this green rectangle represents. This is basically the player offset by the, the variable dx. So what I'm doing there is checking for collision between the proposed position, this green box, and the actual world tile. So if I'm detecting collision at that point, then that means that I can't move the player all the way across that far because he will overlap. So it just gives me a preemptive way of identifying that if I keep moving or if I keep jumping or if I keep falling, I will eventually collide with an object. So I can take that opportunity because I've identified it to actually do something about it and restrict the amount of movement that the player can make. So to actually code that, we just break it down into two collision checks. So first of all, collision in the X direction. So here we're looking for the platform rectangle. So because I'm iterating through the platform group and I'm taking each individual platform, well, this is an instance of the platform class. Therefore, it's got a rect uh, variable. So it's got rectangular properties. So I can say platform.rect. So I basically take the rectangle of that individual platform and then carry out a rectangular collision. So we use the collide rect function from Pygame. And the rectangle that I want to check for collision with is the player. So I could say self. But remember, this isn't the player where he's currently at. I want to look for where the player is going to be. So I actually want to take his current position and then add in the delta x value because I'm checking for x collision only at the moment. So I can just come up here and just copy this code rather than having to type it all out again. So this is this exact same collision from when I was checking against the world tiles. Now I'm just checking against the platforms down here. But the principle is exactly the same. So I'm taking the player's x position, adding on this delta x, keeping his y position the same, and then his width and a height. So I'm creating this green rectangle from that image right now and I'm checking for collision with it. So if I detect collision, then that means that I can't move all that distance. So let's just say dx equals zero. So that's it, that's x collision handled. Uh, and now I need to move on to y collision. But before I do, I'm just gonna check what actually happens in the code uh, before I go too much further. 
and the platform is a little bit too high. But yeah, you can kind of see it. So I can't actually go through the platform there. I'm jumping against it, and then I just kind of slide up and down it. So even though I haven't got Y coordinate collision yet, I can't run through this platform. I do get collision working in the X direction. So that's fine. All I need to do now is add Y collision. So let's just add a comment here. Collision in the Y direction. Uh, so this is going to be exactly the same, and I can actually just copy that line from up there down here. The only difference now is that I'm checking for collision with the player's rectangle if he is already uh, moved by delta y, so in the y direction instead. So if there is a collision, then I need to determine whether it's from above or below the platform. So the way I did that with the world tiles up here was I just checked whether I'm jumping or whether I'm falling. It was simple enough and I could do that there. But I can't do the same thing here because the platforms themselves are moving. So my own velocity is kind of irrelevant to an extent because I could be jumping but the platforms may be moving it's itself. So that's not quite going to work here. So let's just add a comment first to say check if below platform. And this check is actually quite straightforward. So if we go back to this diagram, well, I know this is showing the x, core, x um, direction, x axis. But if you imagine that the player is underneath this, this black block and this is the platform, as the player jumps, essentially what we'd have is this kind of overlap between the green and the black. So I can just say subtract the top of the player's rectangle, which is the player's head, and the bottom of the block that I'm checking collision with, and say that if that distance, if that overlap is below a certain value, then that means the player must be below. Because if the top of the player is somewhere up here, then the distance from the top of the player to the bottom of the rectangle is going to be really high. But if that distance is quite small, then it means that he must be down here somewhere. So that's quite straightforward to add. What I need to define is an additional variable, and this is going to be my collision threshold. And that's that kind of acceptable band of, of how much overlap is allowed before I determine that the player is too high above the platform. So let's scroll up a little bit to where I start off my update method. And these, this is where I've got some of my local variables for this update method. So I'll just add another one here. And it's going to be call for collision underscore thresh for threshold. And I'll just set this to 20 pixels. So as long as the overlap is below 20 pixels, then that means that he must be somewhere underneath the uh, platform. So let's come back down to where I'm checking the platform collision. And now I just need to do the sums, basically. I need to say if the top of the player, so self.rect.top plus dy, so where he's planning to jump to, minus the bottom of the platform, so platform.rect.bottom is less than the collision threshold, then that means that we must be below. However, this needs this could potentially be a positive or a negative value. So I need to make sure that I'm looking for it as a positive value. So we just convert this to an absolute, and that converts any negatives into positives, and then it will check if it's less than that threshold. So if it is, then the first thing I need to do is make sure that the player's velocity stops. So his self val dot underscore y, which, control, which is based on either him jumping or gravity pulling him down, this needs to be zero immediately, because if he's hit his head off something, he can't still have a Y velocity. He must stop. And then the other thing I need to do is make sure that he doesn't go through the object. So I need to set the player's top to the same as the rectangle bottom. And I do that by just changing this DY. I just calculate what the difference is between the, the bottom of the rectangle, or sorry, the bottom of the platform and the player's head. And that's how much I allow him to move. So let's say DY equals platform.rect.bottom minus self.rec.top. So that's just going to limit the amount of movement. So if we go back to this image, I'm, I know that if I let him move this entire delta, then there's a clash. But what I can do is just calculate what that distance is between the red and the black and say, okay, you can't move the full distance, but this is how much you can move. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So that handles collision for when I'm below the platform. Let's just check if this works okay. I'll run the code. And I'll run over to this one and bounce up against it. And there you go. So now I can basically, he bumps his head and then just falls back down. But I don't have any collision for above. He just falls through it. So that's the next thing to add. So just underneath here, I go back one tab and I say, check if above platform. And this check is going to be exactly the same. So I say L if, i.e. else if, because it can't be both. And I say ABS because I'm looking for an absolute value. Uh, but this time I'm checking for the player's feet against the top of the platform. So it's going to be self, which is the player, dot rect dot bottom this time, plus dy, and move out to this bracket, minus 
the top of the platform. So platform.rec.top, right? Because if he's above it, then it must be his feet against the top of that platform that are being checked. And as long as this is less than that threshold that I defined, call thresh, whoops, then that means that there is a collision and the, what have I done here? Call thresh, that means that there is a collision and the player has uh, basically landed onto the platform. But I'm not sure why it keeps unindenting this for me. There we go. It should be in line with this if statement above. It keeps automatically unindenting it. Okay, so if that's happened, then I do the exact same thing as I've done for the previous ones. Uh, and I just say that uh, self.rect.bottom equals platform.rect.top. So I don't actually need a delta y in this case. Uh, because he's falling down onto the platform and the gravity is going to keep pulling him down, I basically just say that, well, don't let him fall through the platform, just put him on top of it. I also don't adjust his delta y because his delta y needs to continue decreasing or rather increasing so that he keeps falling as the platform moves up and down. No, sorry, I got that the wrong way around. It's the self-velocity that I don't adjust. I do adjust his delta y. I set that to zero because his feet are basically going to be planted to the platform. It's his velocity that I don't change. So if I run this code now, I just want to see what will happen. And if I run along, oh, now I can stand on top of it. But notice, I am able to get on top of the platform, so most of the collision is working. But I'm not able to move him left and right unless the platform is moving down. As soon as it starts moving up, I'm stuck. I can't move him anymore. And the reason for that is not immediately obvious, but essentially what's happening is because the platform is moving up, there is going to be constant collision. So it constantly thinks that I have collision going on in the y direction. So this section is constantly being activated and because of that, he's not allowed to move. So this section up here where I'm checking for x collision is also giving me, uh, well, it's re registering the fact that there is collision. And the reason for that is the player is staying where he is, but the platform is moving up against him. So as it moves up, it detects that there is collision. So it stops it moving left and right, even though he can. So there are different ways to fix it, but I think the simplest one is just to say, rather than putting a player directly on top of the platform, I can just move him, put him one pixel above it. So note that it's a Y coordinate, which means to put them above, I need to take one away. So it's never going to be noticeable, but if I run the code, he's standing, he's floating one pixel above that platform. So you can't really see it, but it means that that collision issue is gone. He can move left and right on top of it, because as long as, even though the platform is moving up and down, he's always floating slightly above it, meaning that this section doesn't get triggered automatically by the platform moving up and down. So... We're nearly there. Uh, there is one thing to add into here, which is that I need to make sure, if you remember, I had this check above here for self in air, which basically allowed him to jump as long as he was standing on top of something. Well, when the player was on top of a platform as he was here or on top of a block, I set self in air to false because it, he wasn't in air anymore. He was on top of something and he was able to jump. So I need to make sure that I add that in here. So as long as he's on top of a platform, he's able to jump, so self in air becomes false. And actually, I'll just move these around. I'll move dy underneath it just to keep all the selves together. So I'll run this code uh, because there is one more thing that isn't quite going to work just yet. So he's okay now. He's able to move on top of this platform. But if I jump onto this other platform, the platform moves without him. He doesn't go with it and eventually just falls down. So again, I could go through and check for collision and all that kind of stuff, but there is another easy fix to this. So I come down here, I move back by one, and I just say, move sideways with the platform. So note that this is all happening within this Y collision. And the reason for that is there is actually, although he's standing on top of a platform, there is always collision happening at that point because gravity is trying to pull him down. So even though the platform itself is only moving left and right, the player is being pulled down by gravity. So this section for Y collision is pretty much constantly happening when he's on top of something. It's just that this part here makes sure that he doesn't fall through it and he always gets put on top of it plus one pixel. So that means that if I'm getting collision checks always uh, giving me a, a true value here because he's standing on top of a platform, then what I can do here is basically reference the platform's own properties. So if we go back to the platform class, which is way down here, I think. Yep, there it is. My platforms had a self move direction and a self move x and a self move y. 
And if you remember, move direction is pretty much always here. That just controls which way it's moving. And move X and Y identify whether the platforms move in the horizontal or whether they move in the vertical. So what I can say actually is, as long as I've got that collision above, I can check whether this is a sideways moving platform or not. So let's come up here, back up to where I was doing that collision in here. So this is where I was doing that platform collision. So let's just check whether that platform is a sideways moving platform. So a platform dot move underscore X, remember this is set to one for the platforms that are horizontally moving and zero for the ones that are like elevators. So if this is not zero, well, that means that this must be one of the platforms that moves left and right. So then I can just move the player together with it. I can say self.rec.x, increase this by that platforms, whoops, platform.move direction. So this is a pretty easy fix. It just means that if the platform is moving left or right, the player moves directly with it. So let's run this code and jump on one of the platforms. And there you go. The player moves with it and he can still jump off the platforms. All of that is still working perfectly fine. So that's almost everything, but I did have all these little uh, white blocks or, or white rectangles around the player and all the tiles. And the reason I did that was just to show what was going on. But now that the game is pretty much complete, I can get rid of these. So I just need to find where they were. I'm pretty sure there was one within my player class. So if I come up to player, uh, it should be right at the bottom where I'm actually drawing the player onto the screen. I'll get rid of some of this empty space. Yep, so I've got these rectangles here for the player. I'll delete that. Uh, and then where I've got my tiles, uh, I believe there's also a pygame.drawrect here. Yep. So this is for the draw method within the world class. So if I run a code again, there we go. That's everything. So all the stuff is gone, and now the player can run around. And I should actually be able to just demonstrate that everything's still working okay. I'm able to collect these coins, and I've got a score counter still working. And I can move on to the next level. Oh, except there's something going on here, which is that the platforms... Oh yeah, okay. One thing that I have missed, uh, now that I've added these platforms, I need to make sure that when I move on to the next level and when I reset the level itself, my platform group also gets deleted. So let's come back up to where I've got my reset world uh, function up here, reset level. So remember, I'm emptying all the platform, uh, sorry, all the groups, but I hadn't added the platform group to this yet. So platform group dot empty. Uh, let's try that again. And I'll just run along. This level is pretty easy. There we go. That's all working a lot better now. So that's it. That's the game pretty much complete. So if you found this tutorial series useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with more of these tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.